What I would like to do this time, a little bit differently than the last time, I'd like to have the same first two questions. What did you learn about problem solving? And what did you learn about teaching problem solving? But then I'd also like to just observe what was different between this style of session and yesterday's, because I think there's a lot of goals in common, but there's a lot of different approaches to get to this same goal. So I'd like you to just take about two minutes to write down for yourself answers to some of these questions, and then we'll talk about them together. Okay, good. So what about uh, problem solving? Solutions to the initial problem are often narrow and don't um, immediately generalize to the more interesting stuff. It's like when we figured out how to undo and twist. We didn't see the big picture yet. When you turn that around, you gotta start with something simple to get to the generalization. Yes? Sometimes it's not helpful to spend all your time trying to relate it to something else you know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> mathematicians were over here trying to. Oh, is this quaternions? Is this is this equivalent to you know generating algebraic groups and our, yeah, it, our it is right. It's actually like using ropes and finding things. Do you right, know? isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> right, it's, it's, yeah. I mean, it's the it's the free group with two generators with uh, r squared equals identity and one other relation about you know. But to find what that one other relation is, you got to play with the ropes probably. Yeah. Okay. How about teaching problem solving? There was, I was amazed at times because I was putting words into his head, but he didn't use those words. He used things that were very, um, I think, common. Obviously, sometimes they're necessary to have some amount of technical terms, but a lot of times you can get by with a lot less. And then that makes it a lot easier to see how you could take versions of this thing and do it in the classroom if you can do it without requiring the terminology. <laughs> Yeah. I think in, in like what you did yesterday, like with the subtle hints, he used the word perpendicular today. And you know, from my background, I know perpendicular means the slope to the negative reciprocals. So for me, that was a huge. <coughs> so like, I think that that is really nice. Like there's subtle hints that will get those kids to think. It's like a mystery novel, right? You want the author to drop enough hints that when you get to the answer, suddenly it all comes together. Right, you need to have those seeds planted or else at the end it just seems like it pops out of nowhere. But if you have those seeds in there, then you still have the surprise. Then you're like, oh, now I see this connection and that connection, yeah. So I, to me, I think this relates maybe to things other people have already said, is today seemed a little more concrete to me. Concrete is the word I would use where we were actually doing things with, with the rope. And... Um, at least part of it, I think I might be able to, I mean, because it's not just about doing it, but being able to communicate in an understandable way. And we've already talked a lot about representations yesterday and today. So the rope is a great, and, and the other manipulatives that Tom passed around, you know, we have very concrete ways of representing what's going on. You know, I, to add to that, I agree. Look at the size of the manipulatives that we're going to the large scale thing full body motion, small scale, then we move to the paper. Isn't that what we, you know, we try to get our students to do? Act it out, act it out, you know, work through it. It's kind of this real, real nice, nice progression of thought. Um, one thing that I realized, and I hope I don't offend anybody when I say this, but I think it's really important, like, I know yesterday I felt extremely intimidated. <laughs> As the middle school teacher, I'm like, okay, this is way above my head. And I think as teachers, as professors, as mathematicians, whoever you are, we're in this field and we're lifelong learners. 
and we can all learn from each other. And today, like, I felt like I could contribute something to the group. <laughs> and I think that was great because, like, yesterday I did not feel that way. I think maybe it's good to start off where we're intimidated because I've often said I think he's, it would be really good for me to be able to go back and be a eighth grade kid and not get it. To understand the, the feelings that that generates and how that you know can potentially shut you down. So I think it's important for us because we're not probably going to put ourselves in a situation where we're totally intimidated. Uh, yesterday there was a point I was ready to quit. <laughs> and, and I think it's important to probably put ourselves there and battle ourselves through that so that we can help students who I think far more often get to the point of quitting and not be able to move on. So I think there's some benefit for this like when we think about our session next year. I have situations where the teachers there are going to feel uncomfortable. I didn't like it yesterday at times because I didn't feel, feel like I could contribute much either. Um, but I think that's kind of important. Maybe that goes more in this category, really. Right. That's an important part of teaching problem solving, is you have to teach people and support them learning how to deal with. <laughs> One thing that I was going to say, but it's more in the middle, middle column, I think, about teaching, is that he, he kind of took a risk at the end with that, but he, but he didn't. He knew what was going to happen. No, but I that, didn't. Yeah, well, he, <laughs> so, I hope. Yeah, well, we did, yeah. Yeah. Right. but that also added a cool factor to it, and I think kids would really like that. We like that too, and so. And that is that's one of the things that you see a lot of. It's uh, I think we forget the, the cool factor, and unfortunately, math is boring in most. Math situation it is very boring. You know, in a lot of the way it's taught, it is. And uh, you know, in science class, kids are all engaged and blowing up stuff, and you know, most of them third out of pudding, and then you go. To the <laughs> Practically, most of us have, my guess is 43 to 45 minutes. Do these work well? I mean, obviously, it's hard to do this in 43 minutes. Do these work well over two periods a day? I mean, and that's the reality, I think, where most of us live, is that we've got to get it done, a portion at least of it done in a small amount of time. Okay, so I think it's break time.